Hey guys, what's up? I hope everybody's doing all right. Uh, today's video is a talkie. It's gonna be lots of talking uh, because I'm doing a deep dive and unpacking the reasons why I am no longer a Patreon creator. Nothing against Patreon. I love Patreon. I love what they do. I stand by their philosophies. So uh, nothing but love for Patreon. But there were some mistakes that I made going into it, kind of green. So I just want to pass that knowledge on to you guys. So hopefully if you're thinking about starting a Patreon, you can make some better decisions than I did. And then ultimately, hopefully be more successful on Patreon than I was. Um, but at the same time, I'm going to be working on this illustration. It's all pen and ink uh, on Bristol board. I use uh, Bombay India ink with um, the Windsor Newton Series 7 number one round paintbrush. Um, it's super technical, but it's an amazing brush pen. It's, it's this guy right here. Um, uh, if you're serious about being a pen and ink artist, you need to pick one of these up. They're like 12 bucks, but they're amazing. But I'll be working on that drawing and talking to you guys about Patreon. So um, let's go ahead and get started. I know the title of this video is Why I Left Patreon, and though I will answer that question in this video, I also want to give my thoughts as to when you should do a Patreon, and maybe give you some insight into whether or not it's a good decision to do one now. Notice I said now, because I think Patreon is a great idea, but I think it works best when you, as a creator, are at a certain place in your creative career. Let me go ahead and say that I am a visual artist. I'm a cartoonist and an illustrator. My day-to-day -day is pen and paper, pencil colors, acrylic paint every now and then, uh, digital drawing. So I will be coming from that perspective. If you're a fiber artist, a musician, a writer, etc., some of the things I'll say may not apply to you specifically as your creative practices will be different than my own. But hopefully, some of what I say can be applied across the board, and you'll be able to walk away with, at the very least, another perspective. So yeah, that's my, uh, that's the official disclaimer. <laughs> uh, so I don't get any emails. Not that anybody emails me. I'm not that cool. I don't think it needs to be said, but I'll say it anyway because uh, that's what you do. If you don't know what Patreon is, it is a way to support the artists you love without the middleman. Some creatives use it like a subscription service where instead of getting a magazine or a monthly gift box of clothes or chew toys for Rex, you get behind the scenes content, exclusive access to videos or Zoom calls or early releases of art or music or, or whatever. It's like I support you and in turn the artist gives you a little kickback. The other way creatives use Patreon is that you just support them by giving them a small monthly donation of money just out of the goodness of your heart. You love what they do, you want to see them do more of it, you want to see them keep being successful, and you just support them outright. You may get kickbacks, but they're not monthly, and it doesn't matter because you're a huge fan and you just want to see them keep doing what they're doing. The bottom line is, in both instances, you pay money to help support someone you're a huge fan of. This is a great idea, right? It is, and I mean that. Before Patreon was a thing, I support, and I still do, a singer-songwriter I first met in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. At the time, she had set up the same sort of support system through her website, so she was pre-Patreon. And I signed up then to give her $20 a month to make amazing music, and I still do that today. I've been supporting her art for over five or six years now. I love it. And I do. I love supporting artists that I'm a fan of. 
So let me go ahead and clarify this right now. This is not an argument against supporting artists. No. Please buy art, purchase albums, be a patron of those people you're a huge fan of. Give them money, buy from their Etsy shops, wear their merch, go to their shows, be a fan, dote on them, watch their videos, subscribe to their YouTube channels, all, all, all of those things. I am not on Patreon anymore as an artist, but I still give money via Patreon to the creatives I'm a huge fan of. Please, please, please support art big and small. This is an argument for you, the creator, who is wondering, should I start a Patreon? Or you may be asking, should I keep my Patreon going? If you're debating either of those questions, I'm hoping to be able to give you guys some clarity. Okay, let's jump in. First, let me provide an answer to the title question. Why did I get off of Patreon as a creator? The quick and to the point answer is, it wasn't worth it. I never made my numbers private, but Patreon takes a little cut and numbers can fluctuate from month to month depending on patrons changing their pledge or switching tiers, etc., etc. So uh, I estimate that all in all, I was bringing in about $80 a month and paying half of that to other creators that I support on the same platform. So I asked myself if $80 was worth it. It's important to note that the type of Patreon I was running was the kind where I gave my patrons monthly rewards in exchange for their support. At the time, I was writing and illustrating bonus comics. I started up a little sticker club, which means I was designing um, cute sticker illustrations every month. I also rewarded patrons with early access to videos and had exclusive podcasts, and and I don't know, I was doing a lot, is the point. <laughs> and, um, and I think I was doing too much. On the other side of my creative life, I also have boys, I have a job, I have freelance work I need to focus on, and then to find the mental space to record a podcast, and not just record a podcast of me just word vomiting, whatever, but you know, I want to make a podcast. Uh, I want to make one that has like meat to it that has something to say, and that became increasingly harder to do. Anyway, the short answer, it wasn't worth the $80. So, in order to figure out the lessons you can learn from my experience, I wanted to explore how I would do things differently now. In other words, I would like to have a Patreon again, someday, but that day depends on certain criteria. Okay, here's the criteria. Number one, Fans, followers, devotees, supporters, cheerleaders, whatever we could call them, I need more of them. The cold hard fact is this. Everyone dreams about having those 1,000 true fans, right? That idea that all you have to do is find 1,000 people that love your work so much, they'll spend $100 over the course of a year to support you. 1,000 people times $100 equals $100,000. Boom! Rich! Success! You did it! Record scratch! That sounds great, but let's get real. A creative person needs to get their work in front of thousands and thousands of people in order to find just 1,000 of them to buy their work. Here's a couple examples. Jake Parker. Ah, you know I love Jake Parker. I'm actually one of his true fans. The founder of Inktober, artist, Illustrator, instructor, podcaster, family man. Jake Parker has 578,000, give or take, followers on Instagram. If you look at how many backers his last Kickstarter had, that number is 1,270. Okay, I know you guys are tuning out, you're hearing numbers, but stick with me. I'm going to do all the math for you so you don't have to calculate a thing, I promise. 1,270 people bought his last book of sketches. So what is that ratio? That's 0.22%. That's less than one quarter of one percentage point of people that follow Jake that bought his book. Another example is a hugely talented comic artist, Frank Cho. Frank does wonderful work. Um, He does crosshatch. He can do painting. His line work is astounding. I mean, he's just... He's an excellent artist. Frank Cho has 370,000 Instagram followers. 
His latest Kickstarter got him 2,051 backers, which is 0.55% of 370,000. Now, I know an argument can be made that these numbers don't account for online sales or print sales, or if the artist makes money from their fans directly via other means. I know. But the point is that of their hundreds of thousands of fans, a very small percentage actually bring money to the table. So let's compare myself to them. I have 1,750 followers on Instagram. I've been hovering around that number for a year or so now. So how many people would need to buy something from me to match, say, Frank Cho's 0.55%? 10. By comparison, that's 10 people who are true fans of me right now, who would spend $100 for my artwork in a year's time. $100 times 10 is $1,000 a year, which is not enough to live on, to say the least. Am I saying I will open up Patreon again when I reach 300,000 followers? No, but I am saying that Patreon would serve me better if I was able to build up a fan club beforehand. I have heard it argued that you should just start your Patreon and if you only have five followers, no biggie. Just serve those five and it'll grow. I'm not advising against that, but I am saying it didn't work for me. I never really saw the growth that I wanted. For me, I wouldn't launch a Patreon campaign again until I knew I had enough people to support me to make it worth it. Number two, a different approach. In the camp of things I would do differently, I would change the business model from you pay me monthly and I'll reward you monthly to you pay me monthly and I'll keep being awesome. The rewards would be first dibs on books I print and maybe a discounted price, or maybe a coupon code for an online shop. Gone would be the days of, I owe my patrons two videos and a podcast this month and it's July 29th, I better deliver. It's easy to get caught up in that tit for tat mentality and if a creator does let something go by the wayside, we all feel guilty and stuff because These people are paying me to make art and videos and sketchbook tours and I've let them down and they hate me and I'm a failure. It's too much pressure. I want to create what I want to create when I want to create it. I make a lot of stuff and sometimes the art needs to come before video. Or sometimes I need inspiration to strike before I sit and make a podcast. I can't always sit down and just force it. So if you're thinking about making a Patreon, keep this in mind. Lean heavy on community, maybe. It's so much easier to invite your patrons to a Zoom meeting and just have a chat than to force yourself to create a monthly masterpiece for the Print of the Month Club. Just be mindful that patrons should support you for what you are already doing. You shouldn't have to do anything extra. In turn, they should be getting a warm and fuzzy feeling knowing that they help you make a living. And to you, the patron, if the creator is any sort of decent human being, the rewards will be evident. Meaning, the creator will hopefully be sharing snippets of their life or creative process or that sort of thing. Hopefully, they're not just taking your money and running. Which, if they are, why are you such a big fan? Seems kind of a jerk move. So that's really the criteria I think a creator would need to to really launch a Patreon and be super successful. I think if or when I restart or launch another Patreon campaign... I will keep these things top of mind. Having said that, if I were giving myself advice, I would offer this as well. As I mentioned a moment ago, when it comes to rewards, focus on strengthening the community that you have. This can be done by replacing physical rewards with time spent connecting with your audience. I already mentioned a Zoom chat, but you could also record a Q&A session. You can host lives where you make things alongside your audience or involve them in the creative process ask suggestions for things to draw or paint, or, you know, ask them to add lyrics to a song or or whatever. The point is, not having to create a physical thing. Instead, create an experience. If you're thinking about starting a Patreon but haven't made the leap yet, another good tip would be to start a Patreon for free. Patreon allows you to create content and have it be available to the public without having to be behind a paywall. If you want to build up a readership or a fan base, start using Patreon as a hub for sharing all of your content. Post videos, write blogs, post links to music, playlists, share photos, but but do it all for free. People may not realize this, 
but you can follow someone on Patreon for free and have access to anything the creator posts publicly. A great example is Amanda Palmer, who writes a lot of public blogs via Patreon, but then also keeps certain things behind a paywall just for her patrons. If you're starting out and have a relatively small audience, train them to find everything they need for free using Patreon's platform. Have them come to Patreon on a regular basis to see your work. Then, after having done that for a few months or a few years maybe, hopefully you will have built up a nice sized fan base and then you can start making exclusive posts for those that want to pay a small monthly fee. Aha! The beginnings of your 1,000 true fans! One more thing. I feel like this may be a question that's just hanging there like a thought balloon above your head. If you're wondering what happened to my patrons on Patreon, I didn't hop off Patreon and just leave them high and dry. I mean, who would I be with all this talk about community just to tell my patrons, sorry, we're closed, and then slam the door shut? I left Patreon, but promptly started up an e-newsletter. I already had all of my patrons' emails at that point, and so I just grandfathered them into a weekly newsletter that I send out with the same sort of information I was charging for on Patreon. Except now, I don't charge for it. I I just give it away for free. But you have to sign up for my newsletter to get that kind of access. Using Patreon to build a fan base is one thing, but when people say, here's my email address, I trust that you won't spam me, and I'm communicating that I want your comics, your sketches, your concepts, your tips, your blogs delivered to my personal email every week is something else. Email is one of the very first things that was great about the internet. Everyone has an email address, and if you want, I'll even beam this video right to your inbox. You don't even have to enter a verification code. Just visit my website at www.brandonhammond.com and it'll prompt you to sign up. It's free! And that is the beginning of my 1000 True Fans. Just a quick side note, the drawing that I did today, this drawing was inspired by this book called Book Thief. Uh, it's Marcus Zusak. It was recommended to me by Gracie Klump, who is an artist illustrator that um, you should know by now, but if you don't, you need to go check her out. That's Gracie, G-R-A-C-I-E-K-L-U-M-P-P, two P's. Check her out on Instagram, really great artist, but she recommended this book to me and I just started I'm only on page 47, but there is a scene that inspired this drawing. And I thought I'd just read you the passage super quick so you'd know where I got the inspiration from. Each night, Liesl, the little girl in the illustration, would step outside, wipe the door, and watch the sky. Usually it was like spillage, cold and heavy, slippery and gray. But once in a while, some stars had the nerve to rise and float, if only for a few minutes. On those nights, she would stay outside a little longer and wait. Hello, stars. Waiting. For the voice from the kitchen. Or till the stars are dragged down again into the waters of the German sky. Ah, such beautiful writing. Don't you just love it? Anyway, uh, I read that passage, got inspired to do this illustration. So I hope you guys have enjoyed it. Uh, It was a pleasure spending time with you. And if you uh, enjoyed your time with me hanging out, talking artsy-fartsy stuff, drawing artsy-fartsy things. Subscribe to the channel. Uh, I plan on doing more videos like this and I'm trying to get better about consistency. I'm not the greatest. I'm working on it, but I really appreciate you watching and and like I said, spending time together. Um, Hopefully I'll see you next time. And until then, take it easy, you guys.